Hi, this is Frankie DeVita for 95.5 KLOS, and I am here in the Dean Markley booth at NAM 2015 with the great Pat Travers. How Hi, are Frankie, you? Frankie, how are you? It's so nice to see you. You too. So tell me what brings you to NAM this year. Well, uh, you know, we normally come for our endorsements, which uh, in my case is Dean Markley strings. Paul Reed Smith guitars, Black Star amplifiers, and maybe electro harmonic stomp pedals. So, so I just try to concentrate on that. You know. Are you a regular here? Because I don't know that I've seen you here before. No, I've I haven't been. Uh, I think 2010 was the last time I was here, and so you know, I just like I say, I try to keep my um, commitments economical. Well, I'm sure they're pretty happy to have you back, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I enjoy it. I mean, I have fun. I like talking to you and talking to everybody else. It's good, yeah. So tell me what's going on in the Pat Travers camp right now. Well, uh, we're the next thing I'm doing is uh, the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in Las Vegas with Sammy Hager. And uh, so I'll be playing uh, on the Saturday night. It's the first week in February. And then after that, we have the Rock Legends Cruise out of Fort Lauderdale, which is uh, with the, this year the Doobie Brothers and Paul Rogers and War and about 50 bands all together. We've, we, this will be the third time we've So done. is there any room on that ship for the audience? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, it's 4,000 people. It's gigantic, yeah. It's, That's it's one crazy. ginormous party. Yeah, it's very, very cool. True. So tell me about the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. So are you going to be one of the instructors? No, I am not. No, the guys in my band are Kirk McKim on guitar, uh, Rodney O'Quinn on bass, and Sandy Gennaro on drums. I'm just going to show up and play on the, the play night on the Saturday. At the, I think it's at the House of Blues in Las Vegas. Oh, very cool. So tell me about um, what are you current? Are you currently writing, recording? Well, um, I just really we just uh, had a, a live album from the uh, uh, Iridium Club in New York City that we recorded a couple of years ago, and that's being released on Frontiers Records right now. And then in March, I have another studio album on uh, Cleopatra, and that album's called uh, Retro Rocket. Uh, I'm always writing tunes and songs, um, but I don't think that this year I'm going to actually go and commit myself to getting into the studio for 10 or 12 songs. Uh, I think we're just going to play as many shows as we can. So you said you have an album coming out called Retro Rocket. Yeah. Is that kind of you taking a fast track back to your roots? In a strange kind of a way. It's, it's interesting. What happened was uh, a guy I deal with at uh, Cleopatra Records told me that he had these backing tracks, drum and bass, that these guys had put together. Actually, one of the drummers, a lady. And uh, it was in the uh, style of the early 70s. So I got these tracks, and now I have to write the lyrics and the guitar, but I can't really change anything. You know, I have to go with what's there. So I did six tracks like that, and then I wrote four and recorded. Are they musicians that you knew before, or? I still don't know them. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. I don't know what they look like. I don't know anything. I just got the tracks sent to me in a, a email and uh, went to work. That's, a, that's almost like uh, it seems like the equivalent of receiving like a donor heart or something, and you don't know the person, but you've got this this lifeblood that, that, and this passion that they put out there. It was a strange uh, way to work. I'd never worked like that before, but it came out really good, and you, there's no way you would never guess I wasn't there when, I rec when everything was recorded. It, actually, it's very simple. There's not that many overdubs. I just did single guitar, one vocal. On some, there's some harmonies and stuff, but it's all very, very basic. So were you a one-man band for this project? Pretty much, yeah. I, uh, I uh, well, I played bass and guitar on uh, three or four of the songs, but, uh, you know, the, the, the bass and drums were already done, right, so, right. yeah. So what about the Pat Travers band? Mm, yeah, well, we're just, like I said, we're going to try and play as many shows as we can this year to promote the live at the Iridium album and the uh, uh, Retro Rocket album. And also, our last studio album, Can Do, is 
is probably one of the best records I've ever made. And uh, so, you know, we're... Why do you feel that way? I got very determined. Um, and I wanted every song to be able to be the first track on the CD. And it took me about eight months, and I worked very hard. But I think um, if you know you listen to it, you'll you'll go, wow, that's it, that's very very good. You know, great playing, great songwriting, and performances. So, what what are you most proud of in your career? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, like a particular song, something that really caught the audience's attention. Oh, okay. Well, one of the one of the uh, best events in my life goes way back to 1978, and it was in Oakland, California, and we were doing a Bill Graham Day on the Green, and uh, the it was um, ACDC opened, Van Halen came on after them, then my band, then Foreigner, then Aerosmith. It was 65,000 people. We were in the what we call the rocking chair because we were on in the middle. So the crowd was still in great shape, you know, they weren't too buzzed or too hot or whatever. So we had this window and and everything, it was just a perfect day and, uh, you know, it felt really good. That sounds right. That's a great memory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one last question for you. What do you think about the current state of music, the current bands that are out? Because I notice when I come to NAMM now, there's not as many old school rockers here. A lot of names that I don't even recognize all the time. Right. Uh, what do you think of the current state of how the rock music scene is going, or I, music in particular? Well, I really think that we're actually in a good place. Um, I don't really lament the disappearing of the CD. I think albums, vinyl aren't going to come back exactly, but people seem to enjoy holding this large format artwork in their hands and then taking this disc and spinning it and they can see where the music is. And the problem with digital, and, and that's what I found when I first started recording totally digital, was where's my music? I mean, I used to know if it was on a two-inch piece of tape, I knew where it was. I could point to it and see it and touch it and hold it, you know. With digital, you don't, you don't know where it is. It's like nowhere. You have to look at the countdown. Yeah, and that's not very, uh, it doesn't make me feel very feel like confident. No, exactly. So, I think that we're going to have some form, because artwork used to be so important to albums and now because the CD is such a and it's gone anyway but people like that to hold something in their hands. Well, you know vinyl has made a bit of a comeback last year was the largest uh, s amount of vinyl albums sold since I think the early 90s. Maybe? Yeah so I'm not sure where we're going with that but why not? I mean, if people enjoy the experience, you know, of, of, of holding the music in their hands and placing it on something, and then having the artwork to go with it, you know, it's, it's a much more, you're much more involved than just a random thing on your iPod or your phone or your, you know what I mean, where it's just general, you don't see any photos, you don't, see any bios, uh, nothing that gives a personality of, of who you're listening to. There's nothing like reading the liner notes. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah, and so I'm starting to think that one, once again, there's something about holding something physical and seeing it move and doing this, you know, putting that needle down. Now, we may not have albums, maybe it'll be something else, but, you know, I, I think that people like that experience. And, you know. So do you think you'll just keep putting out music, like, as long as you can do it? Yeah, I, I can't really see doing anything else. I, uh, well, I have to tell you... I'm, although I'd make a great lottery winner, but, you know... Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we all would. <laughs> But I, something tells me, though, that even if you win the lottery, you still wouldn't put down that guitar. No, I, uh, you know, when I used to have to do an album and, and I go, oh, man, I have to write these songs. 
and it was always like this struggle but now the songs just come and they come out of nowhere and they're just wisdom and experience something like that yeah mm -hmm. confidence I think you know I used to be very self-conscious about my writing and thought everybody was you know uh, perusing every word and everything and I suddenly realized that's not the case people like mostly the the cadence or the way words sound it doesn't really matter what they mean you know? well, it's interesting that you say that because I'm an on-air personality for KLOS and I get requests in and I get a lot of requests for Pat Travers and so it's what do you think it is about that music that it keeps them coming is it the lyrics the the guitar playing what do you think well uh, one thing I always did was not try to I, I always thought well what's this gonna sound like 20 years from now you know so before I would do something silly or current or stupid I would think, okay, wait a second. Uh, it's 20 years from now. Am I, you know, how am I going to be able to listen to this? So, I, I really have always made an, a conscious effort to to try to make stuff that that has some legs, you know. Well, I think those legs have withstood the test of time. They're still walking. <laughs> my old, uh, Universal has just released a uh, box set of my first all my albums, except for uh, Crash and Burn, which means that. It must still be selling pretty good, otherwise they would have included it, you know, so. Yeah. Well, that's great. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending your time. I appreciate it. Great, thank you. Thank